so be attentive be sincere be serious no point being just curious do it sincerely so first do proper pranayama traditional way <coughs> deep exhalation to begin with followed by deep inhalation then <coughs> hold the breath for as long as possible then exhale consciously important to exhale consciously repeat the cycle a few times and <coughs> during this period relax your physical body and the mind should not wander anywhere yes enough things to worry enough things to think about but during this period don't allow the mind to wander focus on the breath is the best way see how much of air you are able to inhale how long you are able to retain how consciously you are exhaling just focus on that mind will get quite an automatically So the quietened mind, and after studying the Vedanta Shastras, Panishad mantras advise us to do upasana. Here it's called nididhyasanam on the Brahma Tattvam, and it is a direct message from Upanishad. It's not somebody, some charlatan saying something. Sarvam khalvidam Brahma. Jalaniti Shanta Upasita. So the goal of Dhyanam, the goal of Upasana, Vidhyasanam is to attain ultimate self realization. 99% who teach all this meditation courses are ignorant. They don't understand what is the goal of Dhyanam. One who has practiced dhyanam very well, efficiently for many, many, many years, 
will be able to sit down after studying Vedanta Shastras and once again do Mananam Nijidhyasanam on what all has been studied through the study of Upanishads, Gita, Brahma Sutras and focus on Brahman, Brahma Tattvam and Upanishad says do Vasana on Brahman as what? Sarvam Khalu Idam, Idam Sarvam Khalu, everything around us verily, the only absolute reality is Brahman, more and more you are following a religious life and study Vedanta Shastras, you will clearly understand that the entire universe and whatever is happening around you, including your thoughts, emotions, your physical body, everything else, everything is actually seemingly real. So from this absolutely real principle called Brahman arises the seemingly real universe and everything. And by constant study of Vedanta Shastras and this kind of Nididhyasanam, one should understand that there is only one reality, which is Brahman. And what is the advantage? Upanishad says the same Brahma Tattvam, which is difficult to comprehend because it is huge. Brihattamatvad Brahma. Also, it is not comprehensible by eyes, ears, nose. Ashabdam asparsham arupam abhyayam. Upanishads point out that the same Brahman is your own, your own true nature as Atman, the pure consciousness principle. How do I recognize this? For this, the Upanishad mantra also says that there is a supreme reality which is the nature of pure consciousness present in all individuals, present within you. And this is that reality, which is a substratum for all the states of experience, experiences, but does not get <coughs> tainted by any of the happenings during the three states of experience. The mantra is like this. All of you try and memorize this mantra. Ashariram Sharireshu Anavasthveshvavasthitam Mahan tam vibhumat manam matva dhiro na shochati. Shari reshu ashariram. So within this body through which we are doing all our actions, both organs of knowledge, organs of action, keep on doing action. We forget there is one important principle governing all our actions, our existence. That is pure consciousness. Ashariram, Sharireshu Ashariram. Within the matter principle of the physical body, there is this supreme conscious principle which is not of the nature of matter, totally different from matter. It is of the nature of consciousness, existence, bliss, absolute. Ashariram, Sharireshu. You totally forget in all the busy lives. So at least during this period, sit down and do dhyanam. And what is important? Own up to that reality, which is this pure consciousness and the physical body, the sense organs, mind, intellect, all your organs of actions, knowledge, relationship, thoughts, emotions, everything is only seemingly real. We unfortunately give a lot of importance to that. And so you are subject to continuous what is called as sukham, dukham, happiness, sorrow, dejection, depression, problems, all those things. So, identify with the ashariram, sharireshu, anavastheshva vasthitam. Present in all the three states of waking, dream and deep sleep, jagrat, swapna, sushupti, but not affected by any of the three states of experience. That is the greatness. Tam Mahan, that's why it's the greatest principle. Vibhum, most glorious principle. Once you understand, identify with Atman, you will know. Because you will experience supreme bliss. So, Mahantam Vibhum Atmanam Matva, understand. And go on thinking about the presence of Atman within your own physical body. Remove all the doubts. Establish yourself in doubtless knowledge of my true nature, which is Atman, which is Brahman, Matva. So it means systematic study of Vedanta, Shastras, Gita, Upanishad, Brahma, Sutras, constantly. How long should I study? So long as I don't realize. 
and this realization cannot be just for a small instance of time it should be permanent it's like a permanent magnet so matva dhiraha such a person dedicated to the study of vedanta shastras because in today's modern world the word spirituality itself has got many connotations all non spiritual people are spiritual gurus that is another problem spiritual actually means studying vedanta shastras so matva constant study of vedanta shastras matva dhiraha that person is called a real dhiraha na shochati goes beyond all sorrows establishes in supreme bliss and only when you understand this you will know the reality till then systematically study the shastra so today we'll see what bhagwan is saying in the 11th chapter of the bhagavad gita shri guru bhyo namaha hari om vakratunda maha akaya surya koti samaprabha nirvighnam kuru me deva sarva karyeshu sarvada guru brahma guru vishnu guru devo maheshwara guru sakshat parbrahma tasmay shri gurave namaha nidhaye sarva vidyanam shaje bhavaroginam गुरवे सर्वोका दक्षिणमूर्त नम सदाशुभ सरंभा शंकराचार्य मध्यमा अस्मदाचार्य पर्यता वंदे गुरुपरंपरा स्मृतिपुराणल करुणाल नमा भगवत्दशंक लोकशंक शंकर शंकराचार्य केशव बदरायण सूत्रभाष्यक वंदे भगवत पुनः पुनः ईश्वरो गुरुरात्मे मूर्ति भेद विभागिणे व्योम व्याप्तेहाय दक्षिणमूर्त नम अपारकुण सिंधु ज्ञानद शातूपिण श्रीचंद्रशेखर गुर प्रणमा मुदाम ओम ऑल ऑफ यू थैंड एम ब्रह्म लौडली स्वच्छ कैमरा नो पॉइंट हईडिंग बिहेड कैमरा यम ब्रह्म वरुणेन्द्र रुद्र मरत सुन्मति निव वेद सांग पदक्रमोपनिषदर्गायती यम सामगावस्थित तद्गते न मनसा पश्य यम योगिन यस्या न विदुसुरा सुरगण देवाय तस्म नम देवाय तस्म नम ओं श्रीकृष्णा परमात्म नम नो चैंट ऑल दि सिक्स श्लोका please during this period focus on the importance of gnanam absolute knowledge knowledge of absolute reality om shri ganesha yanamaha shri saraswati namaha shri gurubhyo namaha hari om shri bhagavanu vacha tesham eva anukampartham aham agnana jantamaha nashayam yatma bhavastaha ज्ञानदीपेन भास्वता ज्योतिषा तज्योति तमस परमुच्य ज्ञान ज्ञेय ज्ञानगम्यम हृदय सर्व विष्ठि न हि ज्ञान सदृश पवित्रमह विद्य तत्स्वयं योग संसिध कालेनात्मती ज्ञाने न तो तद ज्ञान नाशितम तदिवानकाशयति तत्पर यथई धांसी सोग्नि भस्मसात्जुन ज्ञानाकर्मा भस्मसात्ते तथा ये सर्वे सरंभा काम संकल्पर्जिता ज्ञानाग्निदर्माण तमाहु पंडित बुधा ओं शातिशाशाति नौ चैंड दिस् फाइव इंपॉर्टेंट श्लोका विच वी नीड टू रिमेंबर नॉट ओनली चैंड नौ बट रिमेंबर ड्यूरिंग ऑल युर इंटरक्शन इन द वर्ल्ड एंड दिस हेज डू विथ रिटिव रियालीटी द सीमिंगली रियल यूनिवर्स and i am not saying this bhagwan himself is saying as follows shri bhagwan uvacha daivi hesha gunamayi mama maya duratyaya 
మామేవ ఏ ప్రపద్యంతే మాయామేతాం తరంతి అనన్యాశ్చింతయంతో మాం ఏ జనా పర్యుపాసతే తేషాం నిత్యాభియుక్తానాం యోగక్షేమం మహామ్యహం మత్త పరతరం నాణ్యత కించిదస్తి ధనంజయ మై సర్వమిదం ప్రోతం సూత్రే మణిగణాయివ ఈశ్వర సర్వూతానాం హృద్దేశేర్జున తిష్టీ భ్రామయన్ సర్వూతాని యంత్రారూఢాని మాయ సో వాట్ షుడ్ యూ అండర్స్టాండ్ అండ్ ఇంటగ్రేట్ దిస్ నాలెడ్జ్ ప్రపంచో యది విద్యేత నివర్తేత న సంశయ మాయామాత్రమిదం ద్వైతం అద్వైతం పరమార్థ ఓం శాంతి 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 అథ శ్రీమద్భగవద్గీత ఏకాదశోధ్యాయ విశ్వూపదర్శనయోగ ఓం నారాయణ పరం వ్యక్త అండమం వ్యక్త సంభవం అండస్యాంతస్తి మే లోకా సప్తద్వీపాచ మేదిని ఓం ఇఫ్ యూ నాట్ కెమెరా ఆన్ స్టాన్ కెమెరాస్ అండ్ బీ అటెంటివ్ అండ్ యూజ్ ఇస్ వన్ అవర్ ఎఫిషియంట్లీ నౌ సాల్ చాండ్ శ్లోకా నంబర్ థర్టీ ఎయిట్ విచ్ వీ లర్న్ ఇన్ ద లాస్ట్ క్లాస్ చూస్ట్ ఆన్ కెమెరాస్ చాండ్ థర్టీ ఎయిట్ సిస్టమేటిక్లీ సో అర్జున ఉవాచ త్వమాది దేవ పురుష పురాణ త్వమస్య విశ్వస్య పరం నిధానం వేత్తాస్తి వేద్యం చ పరం చ ధామ త్వయాతం విశ్వమనంత రూప ఓం శాంతి 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 హార్దం స్వాగతం హార్టి వెల్కమ్ టు ద నెక్స్ట్ సెషన్ ఆన్ ద ఎలెవెన్ చాప్టర్ ఆఫ్ ద భగవద్గీత వెరీ ఇంపార్టెంట్ చాప్టర్ విచ్ హెల్ప్స్ యూ కనెక్ట్ ద రిలేటివ్ రియాలిటీ ద రిలేటివ్ యూనివర్స్ ద అబ్సల్యూట్ రియాలిటీ సో సంథింగ్ దట్ ఇస్ రిక్వైర్డ్ టు బ్రిడ్జ్ సో ఎలెవెన్ చాప్టర్ బ్రిడ్జెస్ దాట్ వాట్ ఎవర్ లిటిల్ బిట్ ఆఫ్ కన్ఫ్యూషన్ యూ హ్యావ్ అబౌట్ వాట్ ఈస్ ఇస్ యూనివర్స్ so three questions what are the three questions who am i what is this universe who is this bhagavan or ishwaraha so write down jeeva jagat ishwara three principles are there nobody has understood this properly nobody i repeat 99.99% unless you study vedanta shastra systematically with a traditional teacher another problem is many people are giving lectures and many upanishads and other things you should check whether they have studied from a traditional teacher or not anybody can study anything and then keep on saying because what is happening 99.9% of the world are ignorant so anything you say looks very appealing that is why whoever does not do pada vibhaga anvaya use proper meaning word by word and makes you study systematically with shankara bhashyam please don't listen to them please don't study from them there are people who also say you don't need any book at all just keep on listening automatically atma gyanam will come my guruji will say satishwarya ella mannu huh? it's all equal into mud why acharya has written thousands and thousands of pages of commentary so sit down and study systematically like the book in front of you proper padavibhaga anvaya understand everything imprinted in the mind after studying everything understanding you may not need the book that is a different thing but you are studying that's why people who are not studied traditionally will give all wrong messages so please don't follow any of them also please don't follow internet full of errors systematically attend classes preferably live brahma vidya which has been very traditionally you no know, trained guru parampara and get the knowledge properly absolute knowledge absolutely correctly so now what is the portion we are in in the 
11th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. I mean, if you're not camera on, on camera, it's very important. Huh? If I conduct a live class, what you will do? You will put a curtain and hide, is it? Huh? Why are you in the class and not switching on cameras? Hmm. Switch on cameras, attend. Yes, see, 45 minutes. Give 45 minutes, one hour, you know, four, four times a week, you will get knowledge, that bliss. No, there is nothing that can be equal to that. So, please understand. Okay. So, here, Arjuna got some idea from the previous chapters. Which chapters? 7th chapter, ninth chapter, 10th chapter about Bhagavan. Bhagavan is everything. Bhagavan is both the matter principle, material cause, upadana karanam and nimitta karanam. You remember all those things are forgotten. Apara prakriti, para prakriti, maya, brahman, eh? all these things. But still confused. Who can something that is totally unseen, ashabda, masparsham, arupa, movim, no form, no name, no taste, be the support of all the matter principles? See, can you put this question at least once? If there is some table which is matter, not all that you keep a book, yes. Some matter is supporting matter. How can something that is totally different from matter, and again, consciousness is totally different from matter. What does Acharya say? In the Adhyasabhasham, Tamaf Prakashavat Viruddha Swabhava Oh, Just like darkness and light. Can darkness and light coexist? Tell me. Can darkness and light, can anybody, any Jambavan, any great Mahan scientist, can that person make, can answer in the chat box, can they make both darkness and light coexist? What happens? When light comes, what happens? Darkness vanishes. They cannot coexist. So, how can consciousness and matter coexist? This question nobody has asked because they are not studied Vedanta properly. This combination of contact like sustenance of the Supreme Consciousness, Brahma Tattvam of the matter is what is the greatest wonder. That's why it's called Maya. Daivi, Kesha, Gunamayi, Mama Maya, Duratyaya. Systematically, you study, you'll understand. The three aspects, right down. See, there's no point studying Vedanta Shastra continuously year after year. Like somebody studied Vedanta or Gita for 18, 20 years. And then after that, he came and asked Swamiji. Swamiji, keep on saying something called Maya Brahman. Uh, Satyam and what? Mithya. I don't understand that. That is the fundamental. If you don't understand that, no point simply verbatim studying and no keep on chanting. Now, you see, the... Greatest, that is my what? That principle, supreme principle, which is beyond what? Ashabdam, beyond sound, asparsham, beyond touch, all the five, you know, beyond the ken of all the sense organs and mind. Only that is the source of these three. Write down. You have to sit down and analyze. I have explained this many times. Three things don't belong to matter. What are they? Existence, consciousness, and bliss. Sat Chit Anandam. There is also a shloka I told. Dhrik Drishya Viveka. What is that? Adhyatrayam Brahma Rupam Jagad Rupam Satodvayam. All that forgotten. Anyway, keep on reminding yourself. So, three principles that is Sat Chit Anandam belongs to Brahman and only name and form, add quality, belongs to matter. So, how to understand? Arjuna was very confused. All these concepts are all very good. Can I physically see eh, that Ishwara Tatma Brahman supporting the universe? That was the biggest doubt in Arjuna's mind. Also our mind. So, what did Bhagavan do? Bhagavan doesn't need preparation. Like many people need preparation, need to wear special dress to come out. And again, you have to wear something on the top, wear some special dress. Each dress should be 5 lakh worth. Okay, all that they had to wear and come, then we will get respect. Bhagavan said, here, you see, I am this Vishwarupam and showed the entire cosmos or entire universe present in the physical body of Krishna Paramatma. Instead of Sri Ramanami. So, our two great or three gods were very popular, very important in India. Who are they? Rama, Krishna and Shiva. Among them, one Ramanami comes right at the beginning of the new year. Then Krishna comes in between. I am talking about the our year, the God, lunar calendar, solar calendar, not the you know English calendar. Finally, Parameshwara comes like that. 
So hopefully all of you did know Pooja to Sri Ramachandra. Not only in Pooja, imbibe the principles and only when you follow Dharma. So Ramo <coughs> Vigrahavan Dharma Ha. Epitome of Dharma is Rama. Once you follow Dharma only, you can have any hope of getting Moksham. Then Dharma only, you can go to Moksha. So you have to understand the supreme principle. Bhagavan has given this what? Visual representation. It is something that Arjuna wanted to see. So Bhagavan has displayed. It is not actual. Don't go and look for Bhagavan Shariram everywhere. Uh, like you no, know, like there are many fools. You no, know, there are other you no know, philosophical you no know, schools of thought which say Krishna, Krishna, Krishna everywhere. Then ask them to test their eyes. So Bhagavan has given a visual representation to Arjuna because you have to make them believe, right? Seeing is believing. How much ever you read, Hare, yaar, and all these books they say, Gita says something, Upanishad, I had to see physically, right? So that's why Bhagavan showed that. In that, what all Arjuna has seen? Has he seen only the Bhumi? He has seen only the Kurukshetra war? Or what, all, what all he has seen? In almost all the Lokas, 14 Lokas, he has seen Brahmaji also. That's why suddenly Brahmaji is mentioned by Bhagavan Vedam Vyasa. He has seen everything. And so is what is the first thought of Arjuna when he sees the Vishwarupam? What is the name of Bhagavan? Bhagavan is called Vishwarupa. What is the shloka I told you? Vetakum satyam param brahma purusham krishna pingalam urdharetum virupaksham Vishwarupa yavaina monamaha Some people ask, what is Vishwarupa? It's only Vishwarupa. What is the name Vishwarupa and Vishwarupa? The name is Vishwarupa only. It is Vibhakti. To that Vishwarupa. To that great no principle. My prostration. Why am I calling out that particular sloka? In this sloka, you see, sloka 38. Vishwam Ananta Rupam. Everything is condensed in this. One is Vishwam, entire universe is there. And is there anybody who can define the size of no, universe? Some people say the entire universe you know, was born. What? 28 billion years back. Is there? I don't know what number they give, how they give the number. Nobody can say. So, Anantam. So the matter principle also Ishvara, it is Anantam. Brahman is also is Ishvara, is Anantam, Anadi, Anantam. So Vishwam Ananta Rupam. So in that all the 14 words Arjuna has seen. So what is the first thought of Arjuna? What is the feeling? One of wonder. Very good, Sundar. Uh, see, should be attentive. Uh, next. See, thought only gives that. I didn't give that. Giving the thumbs up also. Uh, okay. So, first is wonder. After that, what happens? His focus shifts to the destructive principle. Please understand. Ishvara Tattvam is what? Jagat Utpatti Sthiti Laya Karanam. Jagat Utpatti Jagat Sthiti Jagat Laya Karanam. Also, at an appropriate time, things have to be destroyed. So that's why what is Brahman called in the mantra I chant every time. Sarvam Kalvidam Brahma Tajjalan. Write down now at least in this context. Tajjalan is the name for Brahman. Not the name for universe. Tajjalan. Tat means from that principle. Ja means Janma. La means Layam. So and Nayate. So that on which it's manifesting, existing and there's a, a total dissolution happens. That is Brahman. So Bhagavan is showing that. In that one aspect is dissolution. When Arjuna is made to focus. Can Arjuna choose which portion he has to see in the universe? Tell me. Suppose there is, I told tell you, know, thousands of items in front of you. Huh? Millions and millions. Suppose you have to see something specifically. You cannot do. Because so many things are similarly in that. Vast universe, Bhagavan is getting Arjuna's attention towards that destructive principle. So, is what's happening? Scared, fears from Bhagavan. And so, when he sees all that, he gets a doubt. Krishna was a no, very simple person, joking with Arjuna, playing, all those things they're doing. Suddenly, Krishna has become the destroyer of the entire universe. So, he asks the question. What is the question he asks? Bhagavan, who are you? What is the function you are doing? I thought you are doing some normal function. You are doing this function. What, what is this function? And Bhagavan gives the answer. What is the answer? I am the mighty time. I have taken the 
form of the absolute destruction principle and so when bhagwan explained all that what happens arjuna what is the internal thought process for arjuna the one of fear now turns into what forgotten devotion bhakti very good so one important point i'll say and then continue with the shlokas well arjuna is no giving all the praises of bhagwan right all the different names i hope you are making all them somebody can start making notes of important words or all the words that arjuna is addressing bhagwan syadi devaha puranaha purushaha tvam param ni all from beginning from shloka number what shloka number 36 onwards somebody can make a complete dictionary rishikesha so jagat parishya all those things here we are going to know see some more new no praise worthy names of bhagwan so what is arjuna entering into praising bhagwan that is why serious students of gita should note that the next chapter is what after 11 chapter or the 12 chapter we all finished it bhakti yoga ha and so before you come to the conclusion Arjuna, what did you out of bhakti? He kept on praising Bhagwan. So you will then think, okay, the best only thing about bhakti is simply sit in one place, keep on chanting, doing Rama Nama and Krishna Nama, or only praising Bhagwan. When you study the twelfth chapter, you will understand that this chanting or Parayana is only one small aspect of so-called bhakti. There are five important things Bhagwan talks about in Bhakti in the twelfth chapter. Anybody remembers? Karma Yoga starts with Karma Yoga one. Ah, K Y one. K N is giving K Y one. K Y two. Upasana Yoga one. Upasana Yoga two. Then Jnana Yoga. That is called Bhakti. Many people don't know. So, in the end, you know, all are, uh, na, 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 K N. தமிழ்ல சொல்லுவார் சுவாமிஜி வடிகட்டின முட்டால் நாட் ஓன்லி நோ நார்மல் முட்டால் ப்ராப்ளம் இஸ் தி சீம் டு என்டர் இன் டு திஸ் வேதாந்தா பட் நாட் அண்டர்ஸ்ட் ப்ராப்பர்லி சோ டூ யுவர் டியூட்டி சிஸ்டமேட்டிகலி தட் இஸ் வாட் பகவான் இஸ் எம்பசிங் அகைன் அண்ட் அகைன் சகாம கர்ம யோகா ஃபர்ஸ்ட் தென் நிஷ்காம கர்ம யோகா தட் இஸ் கே வை 2 தென் உபாசன யோகா லைக் வாட் ஐ அம் டீச்சிங் ஃபர்ஸ்ட் தியானம் ஆஃப் சகுண பிரம்ம ஈஸ்வரா சோ Saguna Upasana, then Nirguna Upasana, like what is Nididhyasana, Apain Jnanam Fail. This is the process. Bhakti is no bhakti if you don't get Jnanam and Moksham. Please understand. So I'm just giving you a side important point. Keep that in mind. While Arjuna is praising Bhagavan with all these names, don't limit bhakti or so-called bhakti to only this. Understood? And bhakti is not something only you know, chanting, praising, dancing. bhakti is an attitude which should be consistently there in everything what is bhakti a thought of absolute reverence thought that this extremely superior which will it will take me to the ultimate goal so there is guru bhakti shastra bhakti also ishwara bhakti so unless you have all this thing guru bhakti and shastra bhakti only ishwara bhakti is of no use anyway arjuna is getting into ishwara bhakti mode and chanting all these names of bhagwan it is like you suddenly when you become either what we go to bhagwan only two times either when we are extremely what in a very bad situation bhagwan nailvi what is called artha bhakti arthaarthi bhakti either when you want money or when you are in problems then what do you do somebody will say sir i want to make more money sir what should some also this fools are there people do cheat all these jyotish they chant kanaka dhara stotram so from somewhere you will go and find the book kanaka dhara stotram book till then you will not know it exists you know only sir then you take it angam hare he pulaka bhushana mashray tan chanting you can do that that everything start doing or you got problems and chant all that that you do shastra say you should do but you should go beyond that understand the ultimate reality so here arjuna is filled with devotion so he is saying what is the pva done for this shloka 38 anybody can confirm pva to be completed okay okay let us chant once 
and then we'll do Padavi Bhagavan Vaya, Shloka number 38. Arjuna Vacha Tvamadhi Deva Purusha Puranaha Tvamasya Vishvasya Param Nidhanam Vetta Sibedyam Chaparan Chadhama Tvayatatam Vishvamanantarupa Om Shanti 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 See, another important thing that you need to understand when you study the 11th chapter is as Arjuna goes through all these praiseworthy names of Bhagavan, he goes beyond the external appearance to the ultimate principle. I told you in the last sloka, Tvamaksharam Sadasat Tat Param Yat, one of the most complicated Vedantic principle of Ishvara. As Brahma Tatma has been explained. So, PBA, we'll do quickly. We'll quickly, I'll do only Anvaya. Okay. So, we'll do quickly Anvaya. Pam Adi Devaha. Now, keep on underlining. All these are important words. Adi Devaha, number one. Now, we'll do something different now. Pam Adi Devaha. Purana Purushaha. Together, one name. Don't say Purana and Purushaha. Bhagavan is not Purana. Bhagavan is. Purana Purushaha, number two. Clear? Next. Tvam Param Nidhanam. Param Nidhanam is number three. This is the what? Tuti of Bhagavan. Praiseworthy names of Bhagavan. Next. Asya Vishvasya Asi Veta. So, Param Nidhanam Asya Vishvasya you can add. So, Asya Vishvasya Param Nidhanam is number three. Then, the fourth is Veta. I'll leave the meaning. They are all names of Bhagavan. Veta. Five is Vedyam. Six is Dhamma. And seven is Param. So, Veta cha Vedyam cha Param. That is number seven. What is that? Eight is Tatam. Vishwam Tatam. Put it together. Then Ananta Rupa. Clear? You got nine different names, right? Now look at the meaning. These are all. Some of them are easier to understand. Some of them are slightly difficult because you need to have some background of Vedanta Shastra. Tam Adi Devaha. So you are the primal God. Why you are the primal God? Because you are the creator of the creator of everybody. So, Bhagavan from this Ishvara Tattvam only Brahma Ji arises after all creation happens. So, if somebody is created by somebody superior, so who is greater? Who is primordial? Person who created, right? So, the costless cost. That is why you are the primal God. So, he is saying he is understood. Everybody is subservient to all the gods also subservient to Ishvara. So, you are the primal God. Adi Devaha. So, then he says, You are Purana Purushaha. Purana Purushaha. Two different meanings you can give. The central Purusha, no, the central Tattvam principle in all the Purush Purushas is who is that? Bhagavan, right? 18 Puranas, 18 Puranas. Bhagavan only finally has to do everything. Somebody, some uh, demon, some Asura will be there. He will take some Varam. He will become very, you know, very powerful. Then only Bhagavan has to come and solve the problem. Because Indra has no capability. So, the central theme in all the Purusha, Puranas is, Pur, I mean, uh, is Purushaha means the supreme principle. That is not the you know, direct meaning. Correct meaning here is Purana Purushaha. Puranaha here means what? Anadi. Sub, you know, substitute the name Puranaha. Purana from Purana means ancient. How ancient? Don't know the beginning. So ancient. Don't know the beginning. Don't know the beginning means what? Don't know the Adi. Slowly, you know, guiding you to Sanskrit. If you don't know the Adi means what? Anadi. Venkatran. Very good. So, Anadi is equal to Purana. So, please understand that. I will read Shankara Vashim. give more clarity. Purana Purushaha. Purushaha. Means that principle which exists throughout the entire universe. Puri Shete iti Purushaha. Puri means city. City means not literally city. That place 
in which there is belling belling of both both matter and non -mat non matter principle the one principle that is permeating everything is called purushaha that is why the purush luktam you study and understand the meaning you will know the right no interpretation of the word purushaha then that is what is explained in tvam param nidhanam so tvam should be supplied for everything tvam adi devaha tvam purana purushaha tvam param nidhanam you are that param means what supreme ultimate what nidhanam so ground of dissolution you see there should be a principle in which the matter has to get dissolved now think now the supporting principle also was matter in dissolution what will happen simple question i'm asking suppose you are got a table i keep on saying on that matter there is some book okay some book i'm not saying geeta order suppose there is a fire and this table which is made of wood also catches fire what happens the so called supporting principle which are supporting so many things oh bhi jayega we say no even that is gone so that is why the supporting principle ultimate ultimate supporting supreme supporting principle cannot have the same nature of the supported entities are you getting the point now fire will consume all matter water will wet all matter vayu bhagavan or air will blow away all matter sir why you cannot blow building and all sir maybe paper it will blow have you seen cyclone typhoon uprooting trees uprooting buildings everything gone have you seen power of wind then agni vayu jalam so all this will get matter can just get destroyed so the supporting hurricane supporting principle also was matter what will happen in the hurricane what i don't know why they kept hurricane hurriedly cane or the other whatever it is even the matter supporting matter also will get uh, consumed by hurricane that is why the supporting principle the ultimate supporting principle in which everything even the dissolution aspect happens because that should not get dissolved so please understand and everything is dissolved supreme consciousness always is present sadeva somya idam agrahasit उपनिषत्पनिषत्पनिषत्पनिषत्पनिषत्पनिषत्पनिषत्पनिषत्पनिषत्पनिषत्पनिषत्पनिषत्पनिषत्पनिषत्पनिषत्पनिषत्पनि
anadi so the beginningless purusha slightly settle because it is a permeating principle supreme ground of dissolution extremely subtle principle unable to make out how all the matter gets dissolved also you are not able to see it. that's why everything is dissolved the fundamental matter is called maya tatvam sukshma di sukshmam ati sukshmam that's why it's not visible even maya tatvam is not visible to the eyes asya vishvasya param nidhanam now asi veta you are the ultimate knower this is one thing that all the upanishads when you start not in the beginning but towards the end portion of most of the upanishads they point out that the real knower is not what you think the ear or the mind or whatever the real knower is consciousness principle why if the consciousness is not there you cannot hear you cannot see you cannot speak you cannot taste you cannot smell yes or no you cannot move so the ultimate knower is what supreme conscious principle bhradhanika mantra has got two chapters dedicated to this so again god punya me study see bhradhanika mrishad and chandu you don't have to study everything you should have patience of course today everything these important portions we have to study in detail understand different ways to understand the supreme so ultimate knower is asi veta veta means knower you are the ultimate knower why ultimate knower if something happens because of a fundamental principle then we attribute all activities to that fundamental principle so since consciousness is the fundamental principle driving all the knowing so we say you are the ultimate knower and vedyam vedyam means what the only one to be known we want to know so many things so i told you there is a upanishad mantra a grihastha goes to a rishi and asks a question hey bhagwan bhagwan is addressing the teacher as bhagwan please tell me that principle knowing which everything becomes known that principle knowing which everything becomes known so the only one principle knowing which everything comes known the supreme brahma tatvam why because brahman permeates everything so here arjuna is no recalling that you are the only one to be known vedyam then cha dham so abode so there are two things i underlined these words nidhanam and dham dham means supporting principle so nidhanam means in which everything gets dissolved so cha dham as well as the abode cha means as well as dham means the supporting principle abode means what when we will keep the name shanti dham right ram dham in north they keep the house name as dham do you know how many of you know dham means what place where you go and stay it will support you right it give you the place to similarly bhagwan is where everything is resting supreme principle so <clears throat> dham then also param so which is beyond two things what is that the known and the knower these were the known knower or interpretations of the supreme with respect to something because you have to know something then only you become a knower right similarly if you have to know something it is to be known as an entity but this supreme principle is beyond the known and the knower that's why we call what na sat na asat beyond manifest and unmanifest beyond words you cannot explain that so arjuna is giving all vedanta become suddenly become vedantic scholar whether he knew or not he is keeping on giving all vedanta words so param all these things no doubt then what in spite of being all that what are you vishvam tatam tatam means pervading vishvam the entire universe is pervaded by you purusha ye vedagum sarvam idam sarvam purusha eva connect purana purushaha 
with Vishwam Tatam. Tatam is very important word in Vedanta. Tatam means what? Pervading. So add Vishwam, entire universe is pervaded by the Supreme Principle. Vaya, that's why Vaya is coming. Vaya by you. So finally conclude this shloka by saying Ananta Rupa. So Vishwa Rupa, Ananta Rupa are all different aspects, the same principle. Ananta Rupa means what? That principle with endless forms. Here Ananta is connected to Rupa. Why? Bhagavan himself as a combination of matter and consciousness appearing in many forms. So, Vishwam Vishnur Vashatkaro Bhuta Bhavya Bhavat Prabhu. That is why when we do chanting of what? Rudram, then Purush Suktam. It is the what? Epithet or name of Bhagavan in various forms. Sahasra Shirusha Purushaha. Sahasraksha Sahasrapath. Beginning itself is like that. In Rudra Japam, what are you doing? Independently, some, some aspects you are taking and giving namaskara to each and every one of them. So that is Rudram and Purushottam. So these are all what? Worshipping of the Supreme in various forms. So write down the Mundak Upanishad mantra which talks about that principle knowing which everything becomes known. Kasminu bhagavo vignate sarvamidam vignatam bhavati. Beautiful question. You should not forget this mantra. Huh? So, this Grihastha, like all of you, is not a sannyasi. After doing a lot of rituals for many number of years, Venkatan Mulunda, we are chanting now, Mandita, finally he got this question, now oh, I should know Brahman. So, Shaunakohi Mahashalaha, his name is Shaunaka. Mahashalaha means he was in a lot of yajnas. He goes to Angirasa Rishi. When you study Mundakumnishad, if you are blessed, you will study that. Okay. First question he puts to that Rishi is that Kasminu Bhagavo Vignatam Vigna Sarvamidam Vignatam Bhavati. That please tell me that principle, knowing which everything becomes known. Do we get time to even think about this question? What Madhuvarish? You will think one day, sure. But you should. The way we are busy with so many things, so many things are occupying our mind. Do we even think about there is some supreme principle, Brahma Tattvam, which is a substratum for everything, because of which everything exists, everything is happening. So this Rishi, that means what? How profound, that means what? Slowly withdrawing from the world, focusing more and more on this Brahma Tattvam, Brahma Jnanam. Then only this question will arise. What is this Brahman, Ishwara Tattvam, Kasminu Bhagavo? Vignyate. Anybody find the mantra? I didn't see. Anybody, anybody put reference or not? Huh? This will not get in internet. Ah, very good. Meenakshi, see. Mundaka Upanishad 1.1.3. Kasminu Bhagavo. You all found it? Keep the Upanishad book with you. Study Gita. The problem with all the other 99% teachers of Gita is when you study Gita, only Gita's book should be there with English verbatim, Maki ka Maki. Hey. My Guruji used to do is when you study Bhagavad Gita, you should have reference Upanishads, Brahma Sutras, everything other, Vedanta Shastras, integrated knowledge. Now you are able to understand now. When Arjuna says that Vedyam, you are the only one to be known. Where is the connection? I told you Bhagavad Gita is in the Upanishad. Kaspinna Bhagavo Vignyate Sarvamidam Vignyatam Bhavati. So now, quickly one minute on the Shankara Bhashyam and we can go forward. So, Tam Iti, Tam Adi Devaha, Jagataha, Shrishtratvat. You are the creator of the entire universe. And I told you, the entire universe is governed by gods. So, unless gods are created, universe cannot be created. So, you, you go from known to unknown. You are seeing the universe that is known. The unknown is the gods who are governing the universe. And the gods are created by Bhagavan. So, Adi Devaha. We will connect Adi Devaha and Achala Bhashyam. Jagataha Srishtratvat. You are the creator of the universe. That's what is told. Purushaha. Write down. Puri Shayanath Puranaha Chirantanaha. Everlasting principle which permeates the entire... See, even the entire universe is also dissolved with the fundamental Maya Tattvam. The Purushaha. 
the permeating principle exists because on that only when the maya tattvam can exist as fundamental matter so when everything gets destroyed this purana ha the ancient means what beginningless endless principle which permeates always exists chirantana ha the word chirantana means what everlasting tvam eva asya vishvasya param prakrishtam nidhanam nidhiyate see you all are heard the word nidhanam right uh, nidhanam means what dissolution so nidhanam prakrishtam nidhanam nidhiyate asmin jagat sarvam maha pralaya dau write down acharya is giving very clear definition like maha pralayam many pralayams happen so that is the source is bhagwan this no vishwarupa ishvara tattvam so maha pralaya so you are the basis for all dissolution kincha and also vet ta veta means what you are the no way ultimate no air asi vedita asi sarvasya eva vedya jatasya see you are the principle from which everything becomes known so you are the ultimate no air yate cha vedyam vedanarham tachha asi you are the only see i keep on saying people say learn a learn b a learn c i let this do that only i'll tell you whenever you find time sit down try and study vedanta shastra understand the supreme principle once you understand and integrate and also identify the supreme as your own true nature telling you supreme peace will dawn in the mind i'm telling you ultimate when we say that mana shanti will come only from knowledge of reality so no that's what we chant no in our initial six shlokas what gnanam gneyam gnanagamyam gneyam is vedyam gnanagamyam is vedyam gnanam also is supreme principle that is vetta see vetta is gnanam gnanam gneyam is vedyam gnanagamyam means only one principle really worthy of being knowing so all that is only different words but understand the real principle behind vedanarham can you please underline the word vedana arham means what only one really what worthy of knowing any other knowledge is a binding knowledge understand this only knowledge of absolute reality will set you free totally free free means not running around everywhere doing what you want mentally you will be totally free because your mind free now tell me how many have got a very free mind sir all this mind is very free sir very happy Very anandam, anandam, paramanandam. Yes, sir. What? No. Tell me how many of you got that? Huh? Do we need that or not? At least you answer this question. Do we need that peace of mind? Permanent peace of mind or not? Ah, wow. Only Sati is saying yes. Nobody is saying yes. Huh? Nobody wants peace of mind. Huh? Or the only big nyanam I am telling you. You don't understand. Keep on studying. Study this. You no know, four class systematically. You will get there. And then Vedanarham Tatcha Si Param Cha Dhamma Param Paramam Padam Vishnavam. So that Paramam Padam. So that is the ultimate one to be attained. So Tat Vishnu of Paramam Padam Sadaha Pashyanti Suraya Ha Divi Vachak Shuratam Tat Vigya. So so that Veda Mantra also says that is the only ultimate. Want to be known, Vaishnava. Vaishnava means don't say Vaishnavas or what. I think I don't go into that. Vaishnava means Vishnu is the root here as all pervading principle. Tvaya tatham yaptham. You are pervading the entire universe. Vishvam samastham. He anantarupa antaha na vidyate. So anantam. Write down last one minute. Na antam miti anantam. So what? Antahana vidyate iti anantam. That's how you say in Sanskrit. Antahana vidyate. That principle whose end is unknown, not knowable. It's called anantam. Ananta rupa. Rupa. Rupa naam iti ananta rupa. Clear? Vishwam ananta rupa. We didn't have time to go to the next sloka. So so much to be known. What I'm trying to say is that integrate integrate study of Gita, Vedanta Shastra will establish you in firm knowledge. and once you get this firm knowledge 
you cannot be fooled by anybody please understand why people are getting fooled because they don't know the reality so as brahma vidya students systematically study vedanta shastra understand the ultimate truths and you will always be peaceful and happy chant 38 end the class arjuna uvacha tvamadi deva purusha puranah tvamasya vishvasya param nidhanam vet ूसफुल Are you becoming more confident of Gita Shastra? Can anybody fool you by saying something differently? You cannot be fooled because you are studying systematically. So by blessings of Sri Rama Chandra, Sri Rama Navmi, Bhagwan Sri Krishna, always with us to study Bhagavad Gita and then Parameshwara. Let us pray to Bhagwan to bless us with what? What do you want? You want to become the richest person in the world, most powerful. What do you want? What should you get? let us be blessed with brahma gnanam atma gnanam in this life that is the ultimate because one who get comes a gnani knows everything no botheration right let us pray to bhagwan sincerely sincere prayer never a failure om shanti 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 hi om purna madah purna midam purna purna mudachyate पूर्णस्य पूर्णमादाय पूर्णमेवावशिष्य ओं शांति 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 हरि ओं श्री गुरुभ्यो नम हरि ओं दत्सद कृष्ण 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 शुभमस्तु समस्त सन्मंगलांत हरि ओं नारायण कंटिन्यू सैटर्डे मॉर्निंग सी डोंट थिंक सारी आर गोइंग वेरी स्लोली इन विश्व प्रदर्शन मेनी पीपल फिनिश आउ द एंटर विश्व इन वन क्लास इन वन अवर There's no point. Simply, you want to study just all slokas and again, ne? give meaning. You are the primal God. What is the use? Nothing will go. That's why after twenty years, you ask the question: What is Satyam? What is Mithya? What is Brahman? What is what Maya? Hopefully, you are getting slowly moving towards the ultimate goal. Om Shanti 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 Hi Narayana Narayana.